We made it to still water. So for those of you who don't know, the NASA conference stands for the North American Saxophone Alliance, and it is pretty much the big saxophone conference of the year. They have a big centralized one every two years, and then uh, regional conferences on the off years of that. So pretty much everyone in the US who plays saxophone, classical or jazz, comes to this big conference, and people put on uh, performances and concerts and they give talks and presentations. A lot of new music is commissioned and it's just a really cool way for people to hear new pieces. This year it was hosted at the Oklahoma State University in Stillwater, Oklahoma, which I'd never been to. I'd been to OU and Norman, but I think I liked Stillwater better. The music school had just been renovated in the last one to two years, I think, and so the facilities were really nice. They host a solo quartet and also a jazz competition. My quartet here at UT submitted a tape and got into the live semifinal round, and then the following day there would be final round for the six of 20 quartets who advanced into the final round. Anyways, the actual conference lasts from Thursday to Saturday night, and then the competitions are held towards the front end. Our quartet semifinal performance was scheduled for 10 a.m. on Thursday. Our quartet is split half and half. Two of us live in Dallas and two of us live in Austin. So the two members that lived in Austin drove up on Wednesday morning to Dallas and got there about lunch. We met up at Ben's house, who is our tenor player, and we got a quick rehearsal in and had some lunch. After this rehearsal, we packed up the cars and we ended up taking two cars up to Stillwater just so we had a little bit of flexibility and combined I think our quartet had to take up nine or ten saxophones. I had to take a tenor, soprano, and alto. The alto I play in quartet and then the tenor I played in octet for our sax ensemble performance and then the soprano in case we made finals I was playing soprano on a piece where it was S S S A. Say hi to Ben. We're packing up the car. Wave. Hey. So we packed up the cars and drove the four hours from Dallas to Stillwater. It was actually a, a good drive. There's, there's not much going into Oklahoma, unfortunately. <laughs> ben and I ended up stopping in West Oklahoma City for chicken fried steak at this place that he'd been to before. He said it was the best chicken fried steak ever, and Ben's a big liar, so I can't believe him most of the time, but holy, this chicken fried steak was the best chicken fried steak I'd ever had, easy. And like, like it beat Babe's, which is, that, that's a big thing to compete with. I think it was called Chuck House. So good. If you're ever in Oklahoma City, stop there. After dinner, I think we had about an hour to go until we got to Stillwater. Driving up there was really weird. On the maps on my phone, it said like 10 minutes to go until we arrived at our hotel and there was nothing. I was looking left to right out of the car, nothing side to side. Very different than here in Austin. We got to our hotel, unpacked all our stuff. It was a nice little hotel. It was about 10 minutes away from the university or the, the music building. We planned on having another rehearsal once we got to Stillwater. So that happened around 7.30, I think we all ended up getting there. We ended up running into Zed, which is our graduate quartet here at UT. I'll put their Instagram down in the bio if you wanna go check them out. They were just finishing up their rehearsal. I think I recorded a clip of their Gotkovsky, which was a required piece for the quartet semifinal round. Holy, they literally sound like one instrument. We ended up grabbing a rehearsal room right beside them and just touched a few spots in all our pieces. We played Elysian Bridges by John Anthony Lennon. Um, we played the final movement of Gotkovsky, and then we plan on playing a transcription of the Wedding Day at Trollhagen, which is a nice romantic piece originally written for piano. We wanted to get to bed a little early that night just because we had an early morning. Our um, performance time was at 10 a.m., which I think we're the fourth group to play. Warm up was at 9.20. <laughs> The next morning we had hotel breakfast and then we made our way over to the music building. We got checked in and then we walked over to the warm-up area which was in the student union. We got a nice warm-up in. We, we didn't really run through anything, just chunked through a few things. We only have 20 minutes on stage and Gofkovsky is about 6 minutes, Elysium Bridges is about 10 minutes. 11 minutes depending on the tempo you take and then uh, wedding day is about six minutes as well so we knew we weren't going to get through all of wedding day so yeah after warm-up we made the walk over to the little church hall that we were going to play in ben actually ended up getting a bloody nose in the green room like a minute before our performance which uh, if you know ben then that's something that he would do apparently he'd never had a bloody nose before and this was the first time, so great job to him. He took care of that very quickly. We walked on stage, and in my head, I didn't think we were going to bow because I wasn't sure if that was this kind of performance. This was a competition 
um, setting, so I wasn't sure we were going to bow. And we only had 20 minutes, and we wanted to get through as much music as we could, so I didn't plan on bowing. So I set my iPad down on the stand, and our soprano player, Jacob, goes and bows, and he looks over at me, and he goes, bow. <laughs> I go for like a half bow, and I'm looking at Ben and Imbo to my right, and they they didn't bow and it was just a disaster to start off on stage we played through our, our pieces i thought we had a good run it was just a weird haul it was very narrow and very long the judges were were pretty far back but it was pretty boomy but small it was such a challenge to prepare all of that music in such a short time and i'm really proud of us we put a lot of work in lots of hours i thought we had a great performance results were planned to come out later that day at i think six once we were done with our performance we were able to go back to the hotel shower and then the conference started at around 1 p.m i think right after lunch okay ben how did we do so we went on stage and, and Jacob, Jacob bowed. Jacob went for the bow. And none of the rest of us bowed. And then we looked at him. He looked at me and I did a half bow. And then I looked at Ben and was like, bow. I didn't even ben realize didn't they were bow. bowing. And then it, I thought it was just common knowledge that you're supposed to bow before performance. But I'm not sure if it was that kind of thing. Yeah. You know? So Jacob's head was at his feet for probably like 15 seconds waiting for <laughs> okay, no, the rest it, of us it to It for join sure in. was. No, it was just like a quick bow. Uh -huh. So we made a very good first impression. Um, I think, I think... No, we killed it. We played well. Um, then Kaplan we didn't play well, but... <laughs> <laughs> but no, I thought, I thought we played pretty well. Yeah. We got to play, uh, some Wedding Day, which we, we weren't sure we were gonna be we able to play. We weren't sure we were gonna be able to play. I think, uh, we only played, like, a minute of it, but... We, we played we, what we wanted yeah, to. Yeah, we I got, we like. got the character across, and that's the only thing we were... Yeah wanting to do for it. Okay. So once we went back to the hotel and put our stuff away, we made our way back to the music school where we had a rehearsal for Octet, which the UT Saxophone Studio was performing the next day on Friday at 10.20 a.m. So we had a Octet rehearsal, which was one half of our program. We were playing this piece called Hikari, which was a Japanese work. Again, it was hard to find rehearsal space, so we just took this room that wasn't being occupied and we had about 20 minutes until um, we needed to get out. So we had a really, really short rehearsal. We ended up running the piece twice. After that, some of us attended a presentation by Will Peak, who owns his own business, Peak Performance Woodwinds, which they are a repair shop as well as a, a retail store. Really cool guy. He talked about the ergonomics of the saxophone and how to enhance the ergonomics through customization. Relaxed. But on alto, I have to kind of curve my wrist a little bit. A natural curve is okay. I know a lot of people are saying keep a straight wrist. You should keep as straight wrist as possible. But again, naturalness comes first. I thought it was a really cool presentation. I think after this, there was a, a little break. We had a quick lunch before going to the exhibit hall and trying out all the, the cool things. I ended up going to the Daddario booth first and getting some free reads. Shout out to Kyle Jones. And then I recently saw on Instagram, uh, Dan Gilock was playing one of the new Max X metal classical mouthpieces. So I went over to the Max X booth and tried out the metal classical mouthpiece. I don't remember what it was called, but I liked the sound it got, but it felt weird because it was a metal mouthpiece. It was fairly narrow, but I did like it overall. After that, Ben and I went and tried the new Van Doren synthetic reeds, which they have them for clarinet right now, free to buy, but they were just testing them out. They were all right. I think I still like my my Legere right now. After that, we went over to the, the Legere booth and talked to the Legere guy for a little bit. I was trying to convince him to uh, sell me a 4.25 French cut. As usual, this convention hall was very loud and there was uh, lots of three letter word being played, testing out the mouthpieces. Say hi. if you can't hit the high notes and the low notes in three letter word then it's just not a worthy mouthpiece at around four o'clock that afternoon we went back to the church hall and watched our studio mates zed perform in their semi-final round <laughs> absolutely blew the roof off. Oh my gosh, I was blown away. This conference did really make me want to buy a double case though. Man, 
having to haul around so many horns all day with a backpack, it like I just want to condense down to one thing on my back and live with that. After that, we went and had dinner, which I'm currently blanking on where we went, but I'm sure it was great. That evening, there was the opening concert, but before that, we had a full sax ensemble rehearsal to rehearse the other half of our program that we were going to perform the next morning. That went well. We were playing this piece called Counterclockwise by John Mills, who is a jazz professor here at UT. And then we also rehearsed Cliffs, arranged by Thomas Kurtz, a, another UT alum that we were going to end up performing on Saturday night at the, the final Seek and Discover concert. After that rehearsal, we had the opening concert. Johnny Salinas, the professor there at OSU, opened it. awesome concert. So that rounded out Thursday. It was a great first day of the conference. We performed well and we ended up finding out that night that we did not advance in the quartet competition, which we were very proud of ourselves and we were privileged with the opportunity to perform. We'll see what happens when we compete again. On Friday, we ended up getting there around 8.45 a.m. to watch the University of Michigan sax ensemble. They played a few octets and then a larger ensemble work. And then right after that in the same room at 1020, we had our UT Saxophone Studio performance, which again, we played one octet work and then one large ensemble work. I thought we had a great performance and I was really proud of us. After we performed, we went and grabbed lunch in the student union. We then headed to another concert hall around campus and watched Remy LaBeouf, who's the jazz professor at the University of Denver, which he performed um, his second version of vignettes that he composed. ended up purchasing his Vignettes 2 book. And then to end that little concert, the Saris Quartet played with Brian Catcher, did like a jazz fusion piece for quartet and solo soprano saxophone, which was really, really cool. These days are really long and they're packed with a bunch of stuff and you never get to go see everything because things that you wanna see occur at the same time as other things and they're all in different places around campus and it's not feasible to walk across campus in five minutes to go see the next thing. So you go and see as much as you can. We ended up making our way back to the music building that afternoon to watch watch uh, Eugene Ryu and Maria Torres, who both go to the University of Iowa, perform with Casey Che, a uh, Joe Love duet. And then after that, most of the studio went and saw Chance Stein, who's an alum of UT. Absolutely lovely to meet him and talk to him about military band stuff. That night, I ended up going out to dinner with the rest of the studio, and that pretty much ended Friday. Saturday morning, me and Embo woke up early again and attended a little Q&A session um, with Timothy McAllister and Shauna Pinnock. They uh, answered our questions that we had about various different topics. Then Embo and I made our way back to the music building where we saw the Iowa Saxophone Studio perform a bunch of cool works for sax ensemble. They played this one piece. It was Victor Herbier's Sax Relige. I think that's how you pronounce it. But it quoted a bunch of saxophone standards. After that, we went and watched uh, studio member Jacob Feldman perform with his old MSU Quartet Clap 7. They played a few works and then ended it with a Taylor Swift encore. I don't think it was meant to be the coolest piece of the program, but it was definitely my favorite. We had a late brunch before going back and seeing uh, the premiere of June Nagao's Trillathon for alto saxophone and very sax and piano. Saturday afternoon was the winners concert. The winners for each division play at this, so the high school quartet, solo, and jazz, and then the same in the collegiate division.
and then we made our way back to the convention hall and then roamed around a little bit more before going and having dinner so that we could be nice and fueled up for our performance with the sax ensemble. It was a really cool way to finish off the conference, being able to play on the final concert and pretty much everyone being there to watch. But yeah, it was a great conference, a great location, great weather the whole time. You never want it to be too hot or raining or anything. It was really awesome to meet so many new people and for all the people that came up to me, it was awesome to meet you. One of my other favorite parts was just hearing all the new music. There's lots of cool new music being written and lots of things I wrote down that I definitely want to play in the future. So yeah, that was my NASA trip. Hopefully it wasn't just a long list of blah, even though it probably was. I had a great time. It was cool to, to hang out with friends the whole time and meet new people. NASA is really the big pivotal point in the semester. We've been working all of our quartet stuff for up until now and now that that's over it should be a smooth sail to the end of the semester even though we've got lots of tests coming up and lots of individual practice time now which I'm really excited about. I hope to make some more videos now that I'm not so busy but we'll see. It was great talking to you guys this afternoon and I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button down below, like the video, whatever you want to do. I'll see you next time. Peace!